What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how I made this airbrushed vintage horror movie poster in Photoshop. Dread Labs. Alright, so this has been something that I've been finding interesting for the past couple of years now. I saw a tutorial on how to create this vintage horror uh, like airbrush type look in Photoshop and Although I think they are getting kind of accurate, I still wasn't satisfied with my own results. So I thought let's, you know, do a little bit more experimenting and stuff like that. And so this used to be like an experimental poster that I did for a friend of mine, but I just removed all of these details uh, in order so I could just uh, show you some of the techniques that I've been using in order to create this look. So what we're going to do in this video is basically break down the whole poster from like the start and show you a couple of techniques that you can use in order to create this vintage horror movie type look. So with all that being said, let's get into it so let's start off with the background so the background is essentially just a large black screen and what I did here was I needed to create a couple of like blue gradients and blue tones in the background uh, but these will be as you saw in the end result uh, almost invisible the only where place you're going to slightly see them is here in the background if I remove these you can see like a slight blue tone disappearing um, but that's completely fine um, so basically how I did this was I just made a transparent gradient essentially removing the opacity slider to like here so uh, what I did then was I rasterized this and so what she still would need to do in order to create that wavy effect is go to filter distort wave and for the waves, we're going to remove the horizontal slider to 1%. And it's basically, you can be experiment a little bit with the generators and the wavelengths and the amplitude. I don't want to get into too much detail about this particular filter, but this gives you a similar result to what I had here. All right, so next you have the saucers. And, and as you can see, these look really ugly without all of the like a warmth added into the photo. So as you can see, these are a couple of uh, vinyl discs. And um, essentially what I did was I just grabbed a gradient. I made a selection underneath that gradient and I used it to make that ray of light. So let's just grab the polygon lasso tool. And essentially what you wanna do is make like this trapezium. And then you wanna grab the gradient tool in a new layer. And for your gradient, what you want to do is grab a yellow color and remove the other color and then put this slider to zero. And let's just make all the other saucers invisible. So you get something like this. And what you want to do is blur that out a little bit. And when I'm depending on the size of your document, of course, but mine would do around eight uh, radius of eight. So this is also the time to start getting into something that you want to do in Photoshop to, to reduce the quality because these things are mainly made in the 80s if I'm not mistaken and all of the stuff that you see on there especially because it's also printed and stuff like that or used with an airbrush everything is really really blurry. So if you're going to use like stock footage or 3D renders or whatever make sure that you use a blur in some way or another in order to remove some of the details because if it's going to look really sharp it's not going to look as nice all right so next we have something else which is the light that comes from the back of the buildings it looks really really intense now because there's not anything in the foreground yet but this was done really simple i made something similar with the group put the blend mode of the group to normal uh, essentially this is so, uh, the same way as I made the blue waves earlier in the background here uh, but I keep, kept them black and white and I just blurred them out really good so that there's a lot less detail and uh, essentially what I did was I grabbed the gradient map and in the middle of that gradient map I just put a warm orange filter so that there's an orange hue in between the black and white and in order to remove the black from this layer I just went and changed the blend mode of the group to lighten. So then we have the buildings and the buildings are done in Illustrator and um, I'm just going to show you how I made one of those. So let's just make a new document and the first thing you want to do is click here. This is the perspective grid tool and you want to drag these out a little bit so it becomes a little bit larger doesn't really matter too much but i figured you know let's just do this uh, so it's easier to show you so what you want to do is grab the rectangle tool and instead of having a stroke you're going to remove the stroke here and for the fill you want to change it to a gradient 
And now once you start making a rectangle, it's gonna flow along the grid, as you can see. So let's change the colors of the gradient a little bit and rotate the angle of it to maybe like 120 degrees. All right, so now we have one side of the building and we're gonna do the same thing with the other side, but if we go here, you see that it still uh, keeps being in this perspective. So what you wanna do is go to this little icon here at the top left of your screen and click on right grid and hold your mouse over where it says anchor. And now we're able to make a nice little rectangle in the other perspective. So let's make sure that aligns. All right, so not only the rectangle tool, but also the rectangular grid tool works in this space. So uh, in order to create some windows, what we're gonna do is let's just change the foreground and background color to uh, white and black by pressing D on the keyboard. And let's just draw in a grid. So this is probably fine as well. So what I'm gonna do is go to object, path, offset path and I'm gonna enter a minus number. So for me, minus 15 pixels works and my canvas size is 3000 by 3000 pixels. So if you have a different canvas size, this might be a little bit different. So just click okay. And now what I wanna do is go to the shape builder tool with all of these selected still. And I'm just gonna go and make the backgrounds invisible. Essentially, what we're gonna do is hold Alt or Option on our keyboard and then go in between these like little grids. So I'm just gonna fast forward this because it is a little bit time consuming, but promise me it works really, really well. All right, so if you have removed all of these, what you can do is press Control or Command X on your keyboard. You can remove the like other perspective grid that we made or the rectangular grid, sorry. And then we're gonna press Command or Control F. And this brings back all of the uh, smaller rectangles. So there's now a space in between them. And now what we're gonna do is just change the fill color to another gradient. Maybe like another one, like minus 120, change the degree. And in order to you make this thing a little invisible or remove it, uh, you're gonna select the perspective grid tool again and then click the hot grid. And as you can see, we now made one of these like super abstract looking uh, buildings with some windows in them. And of course you can take this a little bit further by coloring the windows in a custom color, uh, changing the direction of a certain gradient. So for example, this looks a little bit better in my opinion. Well, yeah, this works pretty well. So that's how I made the buildings. And another thing that I did was, and another technique that I used is blur out the uh, buildings with a Gaussian blur, because like I said before in the video, uh, you wanna remove those sharp edges everywhere. And then another technique that I used was the oil paint. And the, basically what the oil paint filter does, uh, you can find it under filter, uh, stylize, oil paint that essentially like to create these squirrels and and tries to brush off a certain details in corners you cannot really see it that well in this particular setting with the buildings but the oil paint filter is something that's going to return a lot in this video all right so now that we have the buildings then the next thing is a running woman and if you look at the final perspective thing i think yeah it went pretty well um, but this is essentially just a stock photo of a woman running, as you can see right here. And I kind of needed to move a little bit lower because she was cut off here, but don't worry about it. Uh, let me just go over the smart fills that I used to make her look uh, really like vintage and airbrushed. As you can see in the layer menu here, we use the oil paint filter twice. This is a good way to demonstrate what the oil paint filter does, uh, especially if you look at her ear here. So. Basically, uh, this is also like a really small image, as you can see. This is scaled up and it's really JPEG-ish. But yeah, if you have a better resolution model or something like that, I would highly suggest that. But it doesn't really matter that much in this type of setting because we are going to remove a lot of the detail anyway. Anyways, with a oil paint filter, essentially what I always do, depending on the size of your project is, so the cleanliness and the scale will always be a 10. The bristle detail will uh, I will either play around with, uh, as well as the stylization, and the lighting will always be turned off because otherwise you get like this weird 3D effect. 
and that's not what we want. So yeah, you can kind of see what the oil paint filter does. Like it, it starts brushing along with certain details and it smooths out like these JPEG artifacts, which is also really nice. Then the next thing I do is put a mosaic filter on it. Basically this pixelates it and this might be like a weird way of doing it. This is just something that I tried out. And why I do this is basically remove more of those details. I want less and less details in the pixels. I just only want to be seeing like those shadows, those hard shadows and the details of like this person. Uh, I think you can also do this with the Gaussian blur or any other blur, but I, I felt like this preserved a little bit more detail in this certain setting. Then we used a curves adjustment basically to increase the contrast a lot because if we look at some reference materials, basically a lot of these airbrushed uh, movie posters have a lot of a lot of contrast in it and that also brings forward a lot of warm colors. And you can see as soon as I started increasing the contrast with this curves adjustment, uh, this picture is already getting warmer and warmer especially her skin tones so that's a really nice adjustment but we still need to have this a little bit more warmer in general especially with the background the buildings and everything but that's something for later as you can see as we increase the contrast there's a lot of like these details coming back up again so what i did was run another oil paint filter on it and remove some of those details that's where the woman uh, this is where we stand with the woman and uh, if we look at the edges here this is something that the mosaic filter does so if it's something that you don't want, I would highly suggest removing this. Um, another option can be like turning this into a smart object or masking it out manually, which is actually what I'm gonna, write, gonna do right now. So I'm gonna press Control or Command on my keyboard, click on the thumbnail and add a layer mask here. And then in the layer mask, with the layer mask selected, I'm gonna go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and let's see if we can shrink that in ever so slightly. So this removes some of those pixely details if you've used the mosaic. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is create a lot more warmth in this picture. And uh, I use two curves adjustment layers to do this. And as you can see, this does a lot already. And looking at the end result, it, it's kind of required in order to create that super exaggerated warm look. But of course you can just manage these and change around the opacity if you are not completely happy with them. Anyways, what I did with the curves adjustments, these are uh, not clipping masks, so they're affecting the whole composition so far. Under the RGB, I just made a slight contrast. So I made the darker tones a little bit darker and the lighter tones a little bit lighter. And then under the red channel, I just basically upped the highlights a little bit. So that means that the lighter colors were basically makes the reds pop a little bit more. We have something that was a little bit of an experiment, but it really works well in my opinion, because if we move this, it really helps with these darker tones, especially in the building as well. So another curves layer, nothing going on with the RGB, but with the red, basically I changed all the darker tones and I just put them to light. So this looks a little bit weird if we just put this to normal, because essentially this makes all of the blacks in our composition red. So what I did is I changed this to color burn and then just lower the opacity in order to just make this effect a little bit more subtle. So mine was around 30%, but you can lower this if you think this is too much exaggeration. All right, then we have the typography. Essentially what this is, is this is a font. Let's just grab this. So the font is called Creeper. Uh, I rasterized it here because um, I wanted to do this perspective thing on it. Basically, I just transformed the whole thing, held control or command on my keyboard and just changed the perspective so that like one part or the logo is a little bit larger or smaller than the rest. So uh, I would highly suggest experimenting with that. Uh, essentially what I did then is I grouped this and basically in this group we have one stroke, which is on the outside, which is like a bright yellow, a red color overlay and a very very harsh drop shadow with the spread turned all the way to 100 percent and a large distance not low, low size but i just wanted to have like a very dark hard shadow in here that's what we did and then uh, the next thing we did is of course if we have this without any filters on it's going to be way too sharp so i use an oil paint filter and a gaussian blur on it to remove some of those hard edges so this looks pretty cool but we also need to have that like vintage haze and I'm not really sure if this is something that results from the airbrushing, uh, maybe like the, the printing methods back then or maybe like the damaging, the aging of those prints. Um, but you want to have like a little haze or something like that over the rest of your composition. And the way that I did that was I pressed Control or Command, Alt or Option, Shift and E on my keyboard. And what this does is this makes essentially like a separate layer with everything that's visible up so far. So you want to go to the blend modes and change the blend mode to soft light. Then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. 
and you want to really really blur this out as you can see essentially what what's going on here is you're spreading a lot of the colors uh, out a little bit more so a blur of around 60 pixels works nicely for me and then you can lower the opacity if you want to in order to create like a nice haze if you look at it it also makes it a little bit more warm but yeah that's something that i just think it really ties the whole picture together as well a little bit because this removes a lot of those things where you can kind of see that it's like a separate layer then to the finishing touch because basically this finishing touch is yeah the very very most important part of this and that's the texture and the grain because look at that difference there's so much going on here uh, that just, just going on in the overlays the first thing we did was grab a photocopy texture to create some of these damages that you can see a lot here so let me just show you what it looks like normally it's essentially a free texture from texturefabric.com i'll put a link down in the description and if i don't you can just remind me and i'll try to edit it later so set the blend mode to screen and then basically change it a little bit up with the curves basically making it a little bit darker because the darker the texture gets the less of these lighter grainy stuff uh, starts appearing so yeah, this is just a personal taste if you make this too large it's going to be looking too damaged and that's not really what we want so a little bit darker here uh, so we just have these scratches and a little bit of the grain but not too much and then of course the grain itself and these grains are made in photoshop so let me just put them to normal blend mode and 100 percent opacity so you can see them a little bit better so essentially what this is is a blurred grain so essentially how i did this was i made a new layer i filled this layer up with 50 percent gray then I went to filter, filter gallery, and under the texture folder, there's this grain effect. And basically you wanna use the grain type clump, play around with the intensity a little bit. I think it, an intensity of 50 and a contrast of 50 is great. This is gonna be looking a little bit colorful. So what you wanna do is go to control U and remove the saturation. So it's a black and white image now. And the grain is a little bit detailed. So what you wanna do is scale this up just a little bit something like here in order to create a little bit more of these larger clumps of grain and the next thing you want to do is basically duplicate this once let's just make the other ones invisible and we want to make one that's called grain highlight and grain shadows so for the grain highlights let's just go and put the blend mode to multiple uh, sorry to screen and it's really intense now so what you want to do is press command or control m on your keyboard to bring up another curves adjustment and basically make this layer a lot a lot darker basically you want to play around with it and you want to see how much of these white speckles are popping up in the picture because it's, this is one of the most important textures in here as you can see and then you want to go to the shadows one change this blend mode to multiply and then do the same thing but make the image lighter with the curves adjustment so like this and this one can get like pretty weird so as you can see with like a high contrast it's yeah it looks not really that nice so you want to make this really really light and only have like these really subtle clumps of gradient so or, sorry clumps of grain and then essentially you're finished all right so what's one more thing if you think these are too intense you can also of course change the opacity on these grain layers especially with the highlight these can get really intense um but yeah that's pretty much how i made this poster so yeah guys there you have it a couple of techniques that I use in order to create a vintage airbrush effect uh, like in vintage horror movie posters. So if you want to get the PSD file for this, you can get it by becoming a patron of mine. If you don't know, thanks to my patrons, I'm able to give you guys a new tutorial for free every week. In order to do that, I need to do Dreadlabs full time. And I cannot do Dreadlabs full time on a YouTube ad revenue based income. Uh, so in order to do that, I created a Patreon for people to support me. So if you become a patron, like I said, you can get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials. You can also get a 15% discount in my asset web store, which contains a lot of textures. And you'll also get an exclusive Discord role in the Dreadlabs Discord community. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive video tutorials, such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to make death metal logos from scratch, and also how to make Y2K Ray Flyers. So if this is something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description. And one more time, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much. If you don't have the budget to support Dreadlabs yourself, leaving a like, a comment and subscribe already does a lot. So with all of that being said, this was Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.